Congratulations on enrolling in your first calculus class. The first question you may have is what is calculus and how is it different from other math classes? So to begin, the word calculus is Latin and means small stone or pebble. Calculus is the mathematical study of change. It focuses on instant rate of change and accumulation. There are two branches or two main topics of calculus. Differential calculus focuses on the study of instantaneous rates of change while integral calculus focuses on the accumulation of areas or areas of irregular shapes. Differential calculus involves a process called differentiation or determining derivatives. The formal definition of a derivative involves something called a limit which is where the study of calculus begins. Integral calculus involves the process of integration or determining antiderivatives or evaluating definite integrals. The definition of an integral also involves a limit. Differentiation and integration are connected through the fundamental theorem of calculus. Essentially, differentiation and integration are opposite operations or undo each other. Calculus is considered to have been developed independently in the 17th century by Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz. Though there is sometimes a discussion as to who developed calculus first, it's generally accepted they developed it independently at the same time in the 17th century. Calculus has many applications in the field of science, engineering, and economics. Let's look at some examples to see how calculus is related to algebra and geometry, but is much more dynamic and powerful. The graph below is a function that models the distance a car is from a starting point as it drives away. Notice how we have the time in seconds along the horizontal axis and the distance in meters along the vertical axis. Analyzing the graph, notice how the distance away from the starting point increases quickly from zero to let's say three seconds. Then after three seconds, the distance continues to increase, but not as fast. If we were concerned about the rate at which the car is traveling away from the starting point, we'd be concerned about the change in distance divided by the change in time. Notice how distance in meters divided by time in seconds would give us the rate in meters per second. So we know in algebra, if we select two points on the graph, we could sketch a line, and this is called a secant line, and the slope of the secant line would give us the average rate of change, or the average rate, from time equals one second to time equals three seconds. Where the average rate of change, again, is the slope of the secant line given by the change of y divided by the change of x, or in this case, the change in distance divided by the change in time. But if we wanted to know the instantaneous rate of change, or the rate at a given time, not an average rate of change, this would take calculus. Where the instantaneous rate of change at a given time would be the slope of a tangent line pictured here. So if we wanted to find the instantaneous rate of change of the car, at let's say t equals three seconds, it would be given by the slope of this tangent line by evaluating the derivative of the given function at time three seconds. So the instantaneous rate of change is the slope of the tangent line which would be equal to f prime of three which means the value of the derivative function at time three seconds. So using calculus we can find instantaneous rates of change which is much more powerful than algebra where we can only find average rates of change. Again, looking at this secant line though, notice how as these two points get closer and closer together, the secant line would approach the tangent line, which brings in the idea of a limit in calculus. Now let's look at a second example. Here we have the graph of a function that models the rate a car travels for a given time, where we have the time in seconds along the horizontal axis, and we have the rate in meters per second along the vertical axis. Analyzing the graph, notice how the rate alternates from increasing to decreasing. The rate increases over this interval, then decreases over this interval, then increases, then decreases, and so on. In this case, if we were concerned about the total distance traveled by the car, since distance equals rate times time, the area under this curve and above the x-axis over a given interval of time would give us the total distance traveled. So notice how as the time increases, the accumulation of the area under the curve increases, 
and therefore the distance increases. So using geometry, we could only approximate the distance traveled by approximating the area under the curve over a given interval. So if we wanted to approximate the total distance traveled from let's say time equals zero seconds to eighteen seconds, we could approximate the distance traveled by approximating the area under the curve using these three rectangles. So using geometry, the approximate distance traveled for the first eighteen seconds would be approximately the area of these three rectangles. If we wanted to know the exact distance traveled, we would have to use calculus, where we want to determine the exact area under the curve and above the x-axis from time equals zero to eighteen seconds pictured here. And this area, where this area would be equal to what's called a definite integral. So again, the exact area, which represents the total distance traveled, would require calculus, and the exact distance traveled would be equal to the integral of f of x integrated from zero to eighteen, which again requires calculus. Going back over to these three rectangles, which we could use to approximate the distance traveled, notice how if we increase the number of rectangles, our approximation would get better and better. So as the number of rectangles increase, the area of the rectangles would approach the actual area under the curve, which again will bring in the idea of a limit. So once again, I do want to congratulate you for enrolling in calculus. Making it this far in mathematics is an accomplishment in itself. I think you will find calculus a powerful and useful tool. I hope you found this introduction informative and helpful. Thank you for watching.